The Morning Joe hosts on MSNBC are slobbering all over Joe Biden, and they're taking shots at Bernie Sanders and what his chances were in this general election. Let's watch, and then I want to correct the record. If you, if you look at the map, if you look how this election turns out, it becomes extremely clear to me, as clear as it was that the Florida polls were off and the other polls were off, it becomes extremely clear to me reading the data that Joe Biden was the only Democrat yes. yeah. capable of threading the needle and getting elected president this year. And even, even that uh, uh, depended on Donald Trump uh, uh, botching the worst pandemic in over 100 years. Yeah, and look how thin the line is right now, even for Joe Biden, a centrist. So yeah, to, to your point, a lot, of, a lot of progressive candidates might not have gotten over this line, Bernie Sanders, namely. But yeah, not true. Not true at all. There's a pandemic. Over 230,000 Americans are dead. There's an economic implosion. There's a looming housing crisis. Foreclosure, foreclosures and evictions are going to be through the roof as soon as they get rid of the protections. The idea that other Democrats would have done worse. Biden underperformed the polls. Biden was supposed to win anywhere from 351 electoral votes to 320 at the absolute worst. He's going to end up winning about 306. So he underperformed the polls. He won by less than he should have won against, honestly, one of the worst presidents of all time. I think George W. Bush was worse, but Trump is still terrible. So he underperformed and they're acting like, oh my God, he's the only one who could have done it. Or, or you're analysis is exactly wrong and any other Democrat could have done better. I do think any other Democrat would have done better, except maybe I'm trying to think. Maybe Mayor Pete, because he's just so goddamn smug that he wouldn't have done it. But I think even like Amy Klobuchar, who's the most one of the most boring people on the planet, I think Amy Klobuchar would have beaten Trump. Now, in, in terms of Bernie, not only am I convinced he would have beaten Trump, I think he would have won a lot more comfortably in terms of the margins in the states that he needed. So, you know, Biden's kind of eking it out, two points here, three points here, in some of the some of the uh, important states. I think Bernie would have had much more comfortable margins in the industrial Midwest, for example. So I actually did a map and said, okay, what do I actually think would have happened with Bernie? So I do think Bernie would have lost Arizona, because the reason Biden won Arizona is because of, like, suburbanite white people who are, like, retirees and somewhat wealthy. So Ber Bernie would not have won Arizona. Um, and I don't think Bernie would have won Georgia, but, but Bernie definitely would have won Iowa, which Biden lost. And Bernie definitely would have won Ohio, which Biden lost comfortably. So when you do the map, I think worst case scenario for Bernie is 304. And actually there's a decent chance because of Chuck Rocha, who does this amazing Latino outreach. Remember when, when uh, Bernie crushed in Nevada, just destroyed the competition. Why? Largely because of the unions and largely because of uh, the Latino vote. Texas has a colossal Latino population. And ultimately, Trump's going to end up winning Texas by about six points, which is pretty solid victory. If you gave Chuck Rocha the, the time he needed for Texas and they really invested on the ground there... I think that Bernie could have possibly flipped Texas because he does so much better with Latinos than Joe Biden does. So, listen, in the primary, Biden did beat Bernie in Texas. But again, if you have the time in the general election, and you get Chuck Rocha on the ground there, that Bernie message is a lot more appealing than that Biden message. I do think it's possible Bernie could have maybe taken Texas from Trump and then we're talking 342 electoral votes for Bernie. So Bernie would have gotten anywhere from 304 to 342. And I think the margins in the states that he needed, he, it would have been a lot more comfortable. Because Bernie was beating Trump in every single poll. And also Bernie stands for, stands for something. Stands for an agenda that's wildly popular. Especially at a time like right now. Where we have a pandemic. And we have an economic implosion. And we have a looming housing crisis. This guy's got the solutions. All Joe Biden had was Donald Trump is bad. Yeah, we agree. He's bad. But what are you actually going to do? What are you going to do? So, um, man, this is annoying because 
Biden underperformed, Trump overperformed, and their takeaway is like, oh, Biden's the only one who could have won. Or other Democrats not only would have won, they would have won more comfortably because, again, this is a referendum on Trump, right? So other Democrats could have won. Now imagine if it's a referendum on Trump and you have a candidate who's actually pushing for solutions to our problems. And by the way, they ran the, the playbook they would have run against any Democrat. Oh my God, socialist. Oh my God, communist. Oh my God, so scary. It's not, it wouldn't work on any of them. Because I got news for you. When everything is falling apart and you make the argument, my opponent is so radical, he wants to really change stuff. That's going to help your opponent, of course, because things are terrible. People don't like the status quo. They don't want the status quo. They want big change. They want radical change. So if Trump were to go out there and argue, oh, Bernie's a socialist, he'll be like, yeah, I want to give people health care. Guilty. Next question. Like, this is what would happen, and he would have won by a more comfortable margin. Jesus Christ. So um, this is annoying me because all the evidence that we have, just so you know, indicates that the further left you are, not just in safe district, but also in swing districts, the further left you are on economic stuff, the more likely you are to win. There was an analysis that was just released on this exact question. Every single Democrat who supported Medicare for all won re-election. Now you might say, yeah, but what about the swing districts? I bet that number goes down. No, it doesn't. The Democrats who supported Medicare for all in swing districts won comfortably. It was the blue dogs who got wiped out. It was the corporatists who got wiped out. So the evidence shows this is what you have to do. You go left on economic issues. Now, I would describe that as moderate, but you go left on economic issues. That's how you win. And they're, they're flipping that on its head. Why? Because they're hacks. These are corporate hacks. No matter what happened, they were going to say the same thing. Left is bad. Center is awesome. Let's change absolutely nothing, even though the country is imploding. It's going to get us nowhere, and that will bring you eventually a President Tucker Carlson or somebody just like that.